In this demonstration, I'm going to show you an example of how to use storage clause policies to manage a set of VMs and identify current performance and shape that uh, performance. Uh, the, this environment here, I have a, a two hosts talking to a scale out fast server cluster, and uh, I'm going to bring up uh, a little script that I have uh, created here that's running, and uh, I'll click to refresh. So, what this uh, is showing me is that I have a number of VMs. So, this is basically doing a get storage clause flow. But uh, I did some formatting to, to make it look prettier. So I have the node, I have the VM, the file name, the min and max, you can see that it's all zero. So my policies here are currently set not to, to change the traffic in any way. And you see the VM IO. So I have different VMs with a different IO profile. So some VMs are doing uh, more IOPS than others. And then uh, right now, there's very little latency, meaning that uh, the storage subsystem can keep up with these. Uh, it's a very efficient and, and it's doing well. I have policies applied here as well. Normally, uh, get storage cross flow gives me just a policy ID. I have actually mapped that to the name of the policy, which I can get through uh, get storage cross policy. So it's down here that I have the policy list. So just a, a get storage cross policy with a few uh, fields here. Again, I have a uh, name of the policy the type, the current limit. So right now I'm not limiting this in, in any way. I also have here a performance monitor kind of targeting uh, the first six VMs. So you can see that it pretty much matches. So this is the VM1, which you see over here. Uh, and uh, this uh, get storage cost flow is actually an average of the last five minutes, not the instant performance, uh, unlike uh, Perfmon that shows the instant performance. So VM3, which is over here, is a little over 700. VM5 is a little under 4,500 IOPS. I have my big, uh, busy VM here doing over 12,000. You can see it over there as well. So what I'm going to do is I have in this script here a, a few options that I, that I can go and, and do. So right now I don't have, I have a policy set to min zero, max zero, but I'm going to go and switch this to what I call my high, settings. So what this is going to do is going to set the cost policy to 1,000 to 5,000 for the gold and 500 to 1,000. And you can see here this VM that's uh, doing a little uh, less than uh, 250 wasn't impacted, still very low uh, Q lamp and it's that same performance level. This guy here also under 1,000, which is the maximum for this one, not throttle. But this guy, remember this guy was doing uh, a little more than uh, 1,000, <coughs> sorry, uh, a little uh, more than 4,000. Now it's being throttled. You can see it's building a Q and uh, that is hovering exactly around. And you can see the limits that were applied. Same thing for our uh, big IOPS one here that was at 12,000. Now it's at around 5,000, which is the maximum that I specified. Notice that when I queried this right after I said, it wasn't reflected yet. So I'm gonna refresh this again. And what you see is uh, it takes about four seconds between applying a policy to it, making the full cycle and getting uh, effective so you can query the flows. But now you can see here that these numbers have changed. Now notice something interesting. Look at my uh, high performance uh, VM. It's actually showing 8,000 average for the five minutes. Uh, well, you can see here performance monitor that had right now effectively it's at 5,000, which is our maximum. But because we're looking at a five minute average, it was at 12,000, so over time it's going to adjust. So, uh, get storage cost flow actually tries to shield you from these uh, uh, surges and, and, and bumps uh, along the way, so you have a good view of an average. So, if there are bursts, it, it, they are going to be averaged out. But if there's a consistent trend, that's when you need to act. You can also see that the VMs there are being limited, uh, have a little bit of latency being applied to them depending on how much they they are. And, and if I refresh here again, you're gonna see the trend going more and more uh, to the numbers that we said. After five minutes, if everything is constant, the numbers down here in Perthmon are gonna match 
of the numbers here. So I'm going to go ahead and set a low. So pay attention to uh, uh, these uh, VMs here. So I'm going to set a low limit that's going to put the max for the silver at uh, 500. So this guy that's doing 700, this guy that's doing 600, they, and this guy here, uh, they're all going to be affected. So I'm going to go apply. So you see that immediately I have the change down here. And I'm going to refresh one more time so that you see it reflected uh, over over here the quotes uh, flow list. But as I mentioned, this guy that was doing that was doing 700 something now is tamed down to 500. This guy is also at 500. This guy at 500. This guy at 500. So the only VM that's actually not being limited is this uh, VM1 because it never actually had enough load to reach that number. So it's just merely going away, uh, doing its thing, and it's not being limited at all. You can see there's no queue being built. Uh, and if I refresh uh, my screen here, you can see that the others are all getting a little bit of latency. So that's how we slow down the VM. We inject latency, but the VM1, which is below the threshold, is actually no latency at all, performing as fast as it can go. It's some workload that it does processing or something and doesn't need all that. So this is an example of the kinds of things that you can do. And I, and I have a script automating this. So before I close here, I wanted to show you that uh, the, the little bit of uh, the script. So uh, this script basically uh, is a loop, right? I do my get storage flow, get storage cross flow. So I'm doing a little bit of PowerShell to do the formatting and the splitting of the of the uh, host name to show just the first name of the host not the fully qualified domain name uh, i'm doing the same thing for the file path i'm splitting it and then i'm changing the label so just a little bit of formatting i'm also turning the policy id into a policy name i wrote a little function here that just basically does a guest source cost policy with the policy id and returns the policy name so just a little bit to to kind of uh, show the flexibility here in PowerShell. And then these are the commands that I use for high, low, and zero policy. So they basically go out uh, and do a set storage clause policy for the silver and the gold and set the limits that I that I put there. And they track the last, uh, the date time of the last change so I can uh, show it here to you. So uh, there is a fairly simple script uh, that just uses PowerShell to, to make that happen. So uh, in summary, we saw how we can use a little bit of scripting and PowerShell and policies to shape the performance of a set of virtual machines. I'm doing this here with seven virtual machines or six in two different hosts. But imagine if you had 30 something hosts in a few thousand VMs, you could do just the same and it would be extremely useful.